This is Psychology 7540 Statistics. I'm going to talk about using SPSS. Now this is the statistical package for the social science. It's the most widely used statistical analysis program. On each of your quizzes and on your final paper, you'll need to use SPSS. So this will take you step by step through some of the things that you can do with this statistical program. Now when you start out, you're going to open the program and then go to File, Open, Data, and you'll open up the Data 540 uh, uh, file that I've provided for this course. When you open it up, it's going to look like this. Now if you've used a spreadsheet like Excel, this will be fairly familiar to you. Across the top, you're going to see the variables. Sometimes in Excel those are called fields. In psychology they're called variables. So each of these is a characteristic for people in this study. Now this is uh, actually data that I collected online uh, at a website, moneyworkbook.com, and you can go to that website and uh, see the questionnaire that was used to collect this, uh, these data. So I asked the occupation of the person participating and their significant other, their wife or uh, uh, partner. I asked for their income and their partner's income. I asked whether they felt they were financially comfortable or financially struggling. I asked for their zip code and from that I figured out what region of the country they live in. I asked for their age, their partner's age. And I also um, included some psychological scales that looked at their um, uh, attitudes toward money. It looked at their lifestyle, whether they like to live extravagantly or conservatively, whether uh, they are financially dependent or independent, and how much risk they tend to take financially. So I measured three psychological traits. So across the top, you have variables, and then down the side, you have uh, numbers. Each of these is one of the participants in this study. And the entire file contains 400 participants. Uh, you can see the scroll bar on the right, so you can um, look down further in the file. You can see the scroll bar on the bottom that lets you uh, look at more variables. And then in the lower left, you can see the data view, which is what you see now or you can click over to the variable view that shows you the characteristics of each of the variables in the file. So for instance, uh, zip code is a numeric variable up to 11 characters in length. Uh, under label, it has a more uh, detailed description of the variable. Under values, some of these um, variables are coded, so for instance, on education, one uh, refers to no high school diploma, two refers to high school graduation, and so those are coded under values. Now let's do a simple analysis using uh, this data set. So all of the uh, analyses are under the word analyze. So you would quick, uh, click on analyze. And let's do an independent samples t-test. So click on analyze, click on compare means, and then click on independent samples t-test. Now this box comes up. Let's look at the risk taking variable. So this is how much risk people take with their money. And let's compare uh, based on gender. Let's compare men to women on uh, how much risk they're willing to take with their money. So we'll click on the risk-taking variable, move it into the test variable box. You do that with that this arrow here. And then grouping variable, we'll move gender into the grouping variable, click on define groups, and uh, gender is coded as one men, two women. Uh, if you're female, you could code it the opposite direction. There's no sexist bias involved. So group one is one, group two is two. 
We'll put those numbers to designate the groups. We'll click on continue and then we'll click OK. And we'll get this output. So what this shows us is in our sample there are 200 men on the uh, risk-taking characteristic. They got a score of 38.8. The women got a score of 34.23. And uh, down here, we'll look at the t-test results, and we'll look at this part of it, t-test for equality of means. Uh, we use the top line if uh, equality of variances is, um, uh, is non-significant. If this is less than 05, we use the bottom line. If this is more than 05, you don't need to worry about that too much. For our purposes, we'll just use the top line for the t-test. So we got a t of 5.682 degrees of freedom, which is n minus 2 is 398. Significance is 0 0.000. Now, SPSS rounds off significance levels to three digits. Uh, you never actually have a significance of zero. What this means is that our significance level is less than 0.001, which means we definitely have significance. And uh, what that tells you is that men take significantly more risks with money than women. And interestingly, all the research supports that. Now let's see some other things that we can do with SPSS. Uh, we can select a subset of our data. So let's say we want to run um, a correlation only on college graduates or only on women. We click on data, then we click on select cases, and uh, then we click on if if condition is satisfied, and in this box we put a statement of who we want to select. So here we put age, the participant's age, so we took this variable, put it in the box, is less than or equal to 5, 0. So what that does is it takes our data set and selects only participants that are age 50 or younger. So then we would click on continue, uh, make sure under output filter out unselected cases is chosen. What that does is just temporarily uh, gets rid of the cases you aren't interested in and then you can go back to select cases and uh, bring those cases back. Something else you can do is compute new variables. So you can create new variables. So uh, we have a variable that tells you the participant's income. I also ask the participants for their partner's income. So maybe you want to create a variable that tells you what the total income is between the two people. So we go to compute variable. We, in target variable, put in the name for your new variable. So we'll put in T-O-T-I-N-C for total income. And then if you like, you can click Type and Label, and you can put a label in. So in that, you could spell out total income. And then under Numeric Expression, put in a formula that indicates how to create your new variable. So in this case, we want it to be Income 1, uh, which is the uh, participant's income, plus Income 2, which is uh, his or her partner's income. And when we click OK, it'll create this new variable, total income. Then if we want to see what our new variable looks like, we can go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Frequencies, and we can create a histogram. So this is actually what that new variable looks like, total income. And you can see like most uh, income variables, it's positively skewed. Skewing is the direction that a tail of a distribution goes. So you can see that the tail goes positively. There are some people that, uh, between them and their partner, they make over $300,000, but the bulk of people make less than 100000 down here. 
So that gives you an idea of how to use SPSS and feel free to contact me if you have any questions about it.